Hello, Ethereum Mini. Thanks for keeping us company. This is Y in the morning. Thank you so much for being a part of us today. Entrepreneurship Tuesday, we are talking about the uh, Kenya Association of manufacturers uh the customer bora uh digital we want to see how things are uh actually my guest this morning is a uh, is a um Head of, Ma of PR Communication and Marketing, uh, Ms. Kahu, with the Kenya Association of Manufacturers. Good morning. Morning. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having me. Uh, maybe to begin our conversation this morning, you could uh, maybe tell us about the KEM. Yeah. Um, people hear about uh, uh, waste management, recycle. So what is it all about? Mm. So K Kenya Association of Manufacturers has many facets to it. Really, our primary goal is to make sure that businesses have a, go a good environment in which to operate in. Mm -hmm. They have an environment in which they can be productive and profitable. Mm -hmm. So what we do is that we work with the government to be able to create policies to ensure that businesses, both uh, large and small businesses and even micro businesses, mm -hmm. can be profitable and productive and have the capacity to offer. Uh, meaningful employment to Kenyans. So that's really our primary uh, reason for existence. We've been around for 60 years. Wow. Yeah, so last year we celebrated 60, we are now 61. Mm -hmm. um, and we hope to continue to do this uh, for the next 60 years and just continue to raise the bar, mm -hmm. making Kenya a great investment destination in Africa. Mm -hmm. um, so that's our core. Policy advocacy is our core business. Um, but within policy advocacy, we have different facets. We have obviously issues on taxation. Okay. We have now issues on waste management and recycling, which is what you're alluding to, mm -hmm. um, and which I guess is, is part of your interest and what we want to talk about this morning. Yeah, yes, yeah. of course, because uh, you partnered with an initiative, DHC, DH of, uh, DHC of uh, Giuliani, yeah. and I, his initiative is... Um, kind of encouraging the young people, bringing young people together, yes. uh, where we have seen how they've tried to uh, control waste management in terms of the bottles they collect to the manufacturing. Now, how has it been? How has the journey been? And when did you join them? Um, so, so the waste ma waste management uh, conversation in this country really started when we had the plastic bag ban. Mm -hmm. Before that, the country wasn't very engaged into this conversation. Mm -hmm. And then the plastic bag ban came and it was now a reality that waste is something that we all have to deal with in our lives. Mm -hmm. um, and we weren't quite prepared for it as a nation. There was just that entire blanket of confusion. Now that we've decided to take this route when it comes to waste management, what does this mean for us as a country? Do we have the systems in place to be able to sustain this kind of um, initiative? Because really the goal for everybody is to live in a cleaner country, mm -hmm. because a cleaner country means a more healthy population. True. It means a, a population that can actually be productive. It, just, it means a better life for everyone and for future generations. Mm -hmm. So I guess we were not very prepared for that conversation, but then plastic bag uh, ban happened and now we were forced to come to the table and have this conversation as a country. Mm -hmm. So that's where the journey started for Kenya Association of Manufacturers. I mean, we've been talking to the government before, but this now became a let's involve all the stakeholders towards right. a shared vision mm -hmm. for what is waste management. Mm -hmm. The truth of the matter is that when you're dealing with waste, you have to be, you have to think long term. Because as long as there's human life, mm -hmm. there has to be waste that is produced. True. So you can't always think of a ban as the, f as the first knee-jerk reaction or the solution, the first solution that comes to mind. Mm -hmm. What can we do that is sustainable? Because we'll always have waste. So we might ban plastic waste, but then we are talking, now we are, I think the world is talking about e-waste. There's a lot of e-waste, and what are we doing about that? And have we even begun to think about the ways to manage that waste? Because it's a lot, mm, you know, and where is it getting dumped? Mm -hmm. so, so that's where now we started evolving a lot of stakeholders, including now grassroots uh, community groups like Dandora Hip Hop City. Mm 
Right. That's now we brought everybody to the table and we said, let's have this conversation. Let's look for long-term solutions, solutions that are both environmental solutions and economic solutions. Mm -hmm. So now we came up with this. Uh, we didn't really come up with it, but we tapped into what the global conversation calls the circular economy. So the circular economy mm -hmm. is 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 uh, finding a way to use make use of products where they are at their end stage. Their end stage is waste. Right. So menunua your packet of milk, mm -hmm. you've consumed the milk, where does the that packet go to? Mm -hmm. uh, can we see a product to all the way to, can we, uh, for example, see that this packet g goes back to the person who produced the packet mm -hmm. and then somehow goes back to another use or it goes back to package the milk again so, so it's a circular recycling. yeah mm. so it's recycling it's reducing mm -hmm. uh it's reusing mm, okay yeah three so there's three hours <laughs> yeah okay. so exactly so mm -hmm. it's just knowing how to make this something that we can economically benefit from as a country mm -hmm. so other group uh, grassroots community groups have been involved it's just that dandora hip-hop city was our one of the first groups that we brought on board to see okay. how we involve communities, how do we involve bigger populations, because sometimes conversations can take place in boardrooms and then nobody else knows what's going on. And then the solution I think that doesn't has been work. happening in many areas. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, so, so that's how now we got to talk to Giuliani's, uh, Giuliani and his colleagues at mm -hmm. Dandora Hip Hop City. It's actually a big group at Dandora. And they are artists. Okay. They are young people, they are mm -hmm. artists, they are creatives, and we are in the corporate world. Mm -hmm. So we want to see how can we reach the bigger masses, okay. and they are the bridge. Mm -hmm. They are the people to help us do this, so mm -hmm. that what we speak is not just corporate speak, mm -hmm. is that whatever I say makes sense to, can make sense to anyone, whether you're in Kericho or Wajia or, you know, it can make sense to you. Mm -hmm. But I can't assume that the language that I am using mm -hmm. will be, or the way that I am speaking, you will find it important. Mm -hmm. So we had to involve Wasani. Right. You know, so, you know, the way people say Wasani is Kiyoya Jami. Mm, yes. Yeah. Yes. So those people really, uh, artists really talk to the community mm -hmm. in a way that nobody else can. And that is why art is, is a great thing, and it's a great thing for us to invest in in this country. So Dandora Hip Hop City came on board and said, look, this is what we do. We are a hip hop group. Mm -hmm. We speak to the youth, and not just the youth, the community respects uh, when us. When was this? So this was in 2017. Okay. Yeah, so 2017, we reached out to them and said, what can we do together? Um, the community respects them. They actually do more than just rap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they actually have run rehabilitation programs in the community that they are operating in. Mm -hmm. So they are talking to the youths about living the life of crime, uh, living from crime and coming to do something more substantial with their lives. True. So they are trying to do many more things to transform their communities mm -hmm. in different ways. So this is how now we engaged them and we said, for us, we think uh, the, the whole country, we, we shouldn't just look to the government mm -hmm. or private sector to, to give us solutions to waste management. We should look at everyone. Right. And so uh, we said about the public and the community is a very big part of it. And uh, Dandora Hip Hop City can help us reach everybody, including the youth. Mm -hmm. So Giuliani came on board as uh, the main representative for Dandora Hip Hop City, and we started to look at what we can do together. Mm -hmm. So initially what we were doing is we had some exchange programs. So they'd come over mm -hmm. to Kenya Association of Manufacturers, they'd tell us what we do, then we'd educate them on mm -hmm. the waste, manage pro ma ma waste management programs we want to roll out. Right. And then we'd go over to Dandora Hip Hop City, we'd look at what they're doing and see how we can add value to them. Mm -hmm. So then, uh, Giuliani and uh, the group, the group mm -hmm. came up with the Customer Bora Initiative. Right. So Customer Bora Initiative is an app mm -hmm. for waste management. Okay. You download the app. Right. Um, and it's really incredible because what you do is once you download the app, mm -hmm. you it's mostly for plastic bottles, right. what we call PET, PET. Mm -hmm. So it's mostly for plastic bottles uh, recycling. Right. It's a plastic bottles recycling program. So the, once you download the app, you tell, you indicate where you want your 
waste to be collected, mostly the plastic bottles. So that means that you have to have thought from home how yeah. to segregate. Okay. Yeah, so you don't just throw your Elianto bottle and whatever, your Coca-Cola mm -hmm. bottle together with your Mbogas that you didn't finish last night mm -hmm. or, you know, you segregate from home mm -hmm. and then now you get your plastic bottles together in, in a way that they can be recycled then you you indicate where you want them to be collected from or where you can go and deposit mm -hmm. your the plastic bottles that you've collected then once you deposit them to what we call the taka bank kiosk okay so once you deposit them there there you earn points on your app mm -hmm. these points can help you buy unga sugar oh where is this money coming from um so the uh, the app is the one that gives you the points there's okay. no you're not given money Oh, no right. one is giving you cash. Mm -hmm. So that's what you're saying. You can trade in your plastic bottles for goods that you, and products that you can use in your house. Right. So there doesn't have to be cash exchange. Mm -hmm. So what they do is that they weigh. You know, so bring your plastic bottles. If they weigh a certain, certain kg, then your points are maybe 300 and that earns you milk, mm -hmm. unga and sugar and salt. Okay. So the more plastic bottles you collect and the more kgs you have, the more you can even do shopping for a month or two months. But if if we're having this uh, app and uh, for the last few days we've been experiencing rains and our trenches are filled yeah. with these bottles, how much awareness have you created? Because I'm sure some of our audience out there, they're hearing this for the first time. Mm, it's true. Some people are hearing it for the first time. And let me tell you, the journey of a thousand miles mm -hmm. starts with one step. You can't just start and become uh, something, uh, whatever great thing that you want to be tomorrow. So we started this journey in 2017 slowly mm -hmm. we've been building it with different partners in fact over the last year we joined uh with companies that do a lot of events that target uh big populations mm -hmm. uh for example october first blankets and wine so we've been joining with partners who are doing some of these events and telling people and we've been bringing bins for recycling to those events and telling people actually uh, when you're eating your crisps throw your crisp paper here and throw your soda bottle here mm -hmm. so that you can segregate so that it makes it easier for the recyclers to then get their products and recycle and reuse or make it into something else. Mm -hmm. So we are really, uh, it's something that we are, we are building, we are increasing awareness and we're increasing partnerships because you see awareness we can't just build as Kenya Association of Manufacturers. Mm -hmm. It's by partnering with people like Y254 Kenya, <laughs> to, to tell people what we are doing, right. and just going out there and talking to everybody and saying, in your own way, can you speak to your own communities, can you speak to your own audiences and say that there's this initiative that is going on. But also, mm -hmm. I think behavior is very hard to change. True, true. So you can raise awareness and put up billboards all over the city, mm -hmm. but there's also the fundamental thing of culture and behavior. Mm -hmm. And how do we begin to transform this? Because I think in other economies you will find, like for example in Japan, they teach children from when they are in kindergarten mm -hmm. that there is value to waste. Okay. That value, ju that waste just is not waste. It's, mm -hmm. It can be valuable. You can remake flower pots from your plastic bottles. You can remake pens. You can remake t-shirts. This chair is made of probably something that could have gone to waste. Mm -hmm. So. Since we don't have that in Kenya, and it's something that obviously we can get into a bigger discussion with government about inculcating into the education system. But since we don't have that, the, where we have to start is further than everybody else. Mm -hmm. Because you can imagine if you, you're just used to, you don't even know where your end, you know where your end product goes. Obviously, I do not. You do not. No, <laughs> Many Kenyans don't. But yeah. Sally, you have mentioned about uh, in our conversation, you've been mentioning uh, soda bottles. Yes. Uh, but uh, the question would be, which kind of bottle is it? The plastic one? Is it the glass one? On what I exactly? Because uh, now, if I'm disposing, like I, the people you have partnered with, yes, um, I'm also looking into a space in the matatu industry. Uh, someone has taken some water. They, yeah. they those yeah. bottles. Yeah. Now, have you incorporated this uh, sector into your plan? How have you created awareness in this area? Or what kind of bottles are we talking about? Yeah, so f mainly right now we are talking about the PET plastic bottles. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's 
your normal plastic bottles. Oh, okay. Yes, um, because you see glass can be recycled and mm -hmm. many people recycle glass. However, the advantage of plastic, and which is why it was one of the biggest inventions of its time, mm -hmm. is that plastic is a safe packaging solution. So glass, you can give it to me, me, and, me and you can handle glass, but even then, mm -hmm. uh, even when we're talking to some of the people we are partnering with, like Kenya Rugby Union, that we want to actually solidify our partnership this year, mm -hmm. they were saying we can't bring uh, uh, glass bottles into the field. Exactly. Because guys will drink, get rowdy, drop the bottle, it will break, yeah. then players will get hurt True. or people will get hurt. So sometimes you have to look at the options that we have and the options that we have are great. Mm -hmm. The plastic bottle option is great as a packaging solution. It's just we have to manage how we, how it, where it ends up and how we recycle it and how we reuse it. And some people have actually used plastic for, to make t-shirts. We have, I can share with you and you can share with your audiences later a mm -hmm. video which shows one of the recyclers and mm -hmm. the Kenya Association of Manufacturers who takes recycling bottles and makes t-shirts out of them. T-shirts. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, so it's it's got many uses, mm -hmm. um, but that is our primary focus for now is the plastic bottles. And then, as we continue with this campaign, we are going to look at moving into larger mm -hmm. waste in terms of waste management. But the conversation of waste management, as I said, is a is a large conversation. Actually, what is on our screen is one of the uses of these. Uh, materials uh, great, yes. yeah and actually on Mombasa Road yes uh, somewhere in Lukenya there's a there's a person who has made a fence using these bottles yes, yes. yeah but also now uh, when the paper bags were banned yes these bottles took uh, space because now they are clogging our sewers so I'm wondering do you have a way of these people who collect them how do they uh, separate them from the waste because now actually this is a behavior that we have with our with uh, people out here, uh, like I mentioned, you drink water, you throw the bottle outside the window, and this is a behavior. Is there a way, other than uh, the liters we see uh, in our streets, you dump here, but you see someone dropping it down, mm. which other way can we have uh, a collective uh, behavior or culture where we will be collecting these liters and the bottles to be specific yeah. in a way that even the person will come to take them, they will have no problem dealing with the mess. Okay, so I think the issue of clogged um, infrastructure has, has more to do with, uh, has a lot more to do with other factors mm -hmm. and waste is one of them, but it's not a main factor. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more factors, like if you can look at, we are not the only city that gets floods and clogs, you know, all, it's a phenomenon mm -hmm. all over the continent and some, in some places all over the world. So there's other factors to clogging sewers and, 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 and uh, inadequate infrastructure. Mm -hmm. um, but as you say, and one of the things that we are actually working with the government towards is to see how we can build capacity for our waste collectors mm -hmm. um, in the streets, you know, so that uh, we can build capacity for them to be able to do the segregation. Because as you say right now, they don't have the capacity to do that. Right. You know, right now they're just thinking, I have licenses to pay, I have this and this, I need to make my collection by this time. And then, you know, so if we can enable them, if we can somehow give them the capacity to be able to segregate when they are coming to your home, but even you at your home, you know, do you, do you even have the space to segregate? So we have to build capacity, we have to build knowledge and education from the home so that when that guy comes, mm -hmm. even he, with the capacity that we've built, he knows he's picking the blue bin for plastic bottles. The green one is the one that has blah, blah, or, you know, mm -hmm. he, they, he knows that there's a difference from the home. Okay. They can't do that on their own. They can't, for example, come to your house and start saying, okay, this is the cabbage that was spoiled, we'll put it here. You see, so there's mm. no that capacity. But there has to be a capacity built in terms of a system, in terms of infrastructure, for mm. these people to be able to collect and segregate. Um, because even sometimes when you dump something, uh, and I want to pick it as a recycler, mm -hmm. the manner in which you have dumped it has degraded the quality of the bottle yeah, for example right. plastic bottle mm -hmm. so i can't even recycle it as a recycler i will have no way to recycle it because the, the value is too degraded mm -hmm. it can't be reused okay so we have to look at um the, i think we have to change a lot in our system in terms of 
education in terms of awareness, but even the practical things. Do we have enough bins in the city? And if we do, how do we tell people, okay, this is where you dump this and this is where you dump that? So th there's a long, we have a long way to go. Uh, we are not uh, proclaiming to have all the solutions in the world. We are just saying we have started this conversation. As a country, it's a conversation we need to have. In the next 10 years, we want to have seen progress. Okay. We want to have seen progress because the, the truth is our landfills are are too overwhelmed. All right. Yeah. Now, uh, Sally, uh, before you respond to how the journey has been with the DHC, yes. uh, you have mentioned about the app. Yeah. And uh, since you're talking about the entrepreneurship, we have young people out there with the app now. Is it an initiative that I can decide now because there, there are no jobs, there's an a plan a plan B mm -hmm. I decide on my own I'll be collecting these uh, bottles and then I upload them and then some someone comes for them um, is it is it a is it a profitable thing to venture into so I think Giuliani and his partner would say it is um, mm -hmm. but it would take time for you to realize some of these gains and the thing is if you get into something, and th the truth is there's an immediate need right now, mm -hmm. which is why systems have to be created mm -hmm. so that when there's a collection initiative, people can realize economic gains from it. Mm -hmm. So that is something that we are working on. However, it's not a get-rich-quick okay. scheme. Mm -hmm. it, it would take time for you to realize because the idea even of waste management is a new idea mm -hmm. in and of itself. So I know that it has been working for some of the residents around Dandora, mm -hmm. which is where Dandora Hip Hop City and some of the Taka banks have been set up. And I've witnessed it myself, mm -hmm. that people come with a gunia of plastic uh, bottles and it's weighed. And on the app, they are told you've now gotten 300 points and now they can get some of the food stuffs that they want. Mm -hmm. um, but you also have to look at which are who are, who are going to be your partners, who are going to be your stakeholders in, this, in, in your endeavor to do this. Okay. So maybe some of the first people to approach and to talk to would be Giuliani and his partners and to see how they have made it work so far. What Can you be part of the value chain or do you need to go and start something on your own similar mm -hmm. to that right. and work with other partners? Okay. So um, it's about, again, collaboration and partnership, which is what we are doing oh, as yeah. Kenya Association of Manufacturers. All right. Now, uh, with the Dandora Hip Hop City, for that period of time you've been together, how, how has the journey been? How have you uh, impacted the lives out there? Because I know one of the in initiatives, of one of the objectives was to end crime where they were saying crime si poor. And then with the customer Bora, how has it been working with them? I think it's been great. Uh, they've been getting a lot of young people on board. Uh, they've been educating. Uh, on in their own capacities in their own groups because I think uh, there's Dandora Hip Hop City which is the main group but then they have subgroups which then speak to different parts of their community mm -hmm. and they've been trying to get more and more young people on board mm -hmm. and to tell them you know kindly help us collect kindly you know um, or just to educate them on the uh, and, and, and make them aware on the benefits of waste management um, and then getting them on board and having them be a main and active uh, participants in this initiative so that they're the ones then now going out there and telling people in the community, you don't have to throw this away, mm -hmm. stock it at the end of the week, see what you have, go to the Taka Bank. So they are also educating the educators, mm -hmm. you know, so that's also part of what they're doing. They've uh, come up with community um, events mm -hmm. where they've passed on this message using their music mm -hmm. and that has been amazing. Uh, we've also just been talking to various stakeholders uh, together mm -hmm. to see who else we can bring on board, on board uh, uh, both on the corporate side and private sector side and also from the community angle. So they've really been champions from the youth and the community angle for us and the journey has been great. Mm -hmm. We are going to do more things this year definitely and the, and the conversations have begun mm -hmm. so that now in the year you will see more and more things rolling out uh, between the, the, the us and Dandora Hip Hop City with regards to waste management initiative. Um, late last year, we actually launched the Plastic Action Plan, mm -hmm. 
for the country. Okay. Um, and this is part of what we want to involve groups such as Dandora Hip Hop City. Mm -hmm. We've actually even worked with people like uh, Miss Koch Kenya. This is uh, in Korogosho. Mm -hmm. And what Miss Koch does is that she trains young people. She trains models. I don't know if you've heard of Miss Koch, but she's probably one of the phenomenal people you should have on your show. Mm -hmm. So she trains young people to see value in, the, in themselves. Mm -hmm. She has a modeling school in Korogosho where she brings young girls and, and educates them about keeping themselves safe, about not joining crime, about doing something beneficial and, and, and substantial with their lives. Mm -hmm. uh, and she, it's, she's also one of the people that we've approached to work with. Uh, her community and the youth that she's reaching out to mm -hmm. in terms of waste management. So these are these are some of the initiatives that we want to roll out in 2020. Yeah, as we, as we conclude and before you tell me the challenges you have been facing, yeah. maybe I would want us to get clearly what is it that the KEM now does to such uh, community groups, that particular thing that you do because yes, you have partnered, yes. but w what is it that you bring on board? Yeah, mm -hmm. so what we bring on board is the partnership of some of our uh, members, mm -hmm. you know, some of the guys who produce the goods that are used by citizens in this country, mm -hmm. for them to know how to, what we call the take back scheme, how this uh, waste gets back to them. So uh, some of our members have now, edu have now educated uh, the youth groups and told them, uh, okay, if you collect, um, or rather they have kind of demonstrated mm -hmm. the ways in which a, a good collection can then get back to them as producers and enable them to reuse or recycle or, you know, remake mm -hmm. into something else. Mm -hmm. So we, we, the thing that we've done is um, as Kenya Association of Manufacturers is bring these youth groups, to, youth, youth groups together with our members who make these things, who will then make the collection process and initiative beneficial, economically beneficial to the youth groups. All right. Yes. Uh, that's awesome. So yes. with the partner partnership and the yes. journey that you've had with yes. these groups and specifically the Dandora Hip Hop City, what are some of the challenges that you've been facing and maybe how did you address them or how are you looking forward into addressing them? Maybe the main challenge I can say is the awareness, uh, is the, the education, um, because we, as you say, it's, it's something that needs to be addressed quickly, but raising awareness and getting people to change their behavior is totally different. Mm -hmm. So I will tell you, I'll do a public service announcement, I'll do an event, but then at the end of the day, you still go to your matat when you when you're finished with your yogurt you throw it outside so maybe that's some of the challenges that we are facing is the change of behavior is going to take time mm -hmm. so but we are hopeful that, that as i say in 10 years time we want to see a difference and we are hopeful that uh what we are talking about in terms of our initiative will have reached Mm -hmm. um, huge part of the population and we'll see a change in terms of the habits of people uh, in terms of waste uh, disposal. Oh, so, right. so we are hoping to see that change and that, that uh, the, the other thing is maybe the policies mm -hmm. to help uh, the actors and the players within this value chain of waste management. Mm -hmm. We want to see stronger, more sustainable policies, for example, that will help the waste collection business be mm -hmm. a profitable business. So that's somebody it, there's no there's usually stigma around waste collection so somebody's thinking it's a dirty job i don't want to do it so if you make the dirty job profitable if you make something like that profitable it's no longer dirty and then people can come and invest investors can invest in plants that help to make this work less and less uh, unhygienic Mm -hmm. less cumbersome so that now it becomes actually something somebody's proud of saying actually i'm part of the waste collectors a uh, business this is what i do i collect waste we actually have somebody in dandora who's doing that right now mm -hmm. but if we have stronger policies as a country so that it makes investments in these areas worthwhile then people come and build plants and build and, and put up machines and then this job is not as it's not seen as cumbersome as it usually is then it's it makes it worthwhile so that's probably also something that we would like to see a change in going forward uh, all right. Yeah. Um, I am giving you an opportunity that to be a camera. Okay. Uh, you speak to our audience okay. and uh, maybe.
tell us uh, what we we are expecting as far as uh, waste management is of concern and the body that is uh, Kenya Association of Manufacturers. Okay. So Kenya Association of Manufacturers launched the Kenya Plastics Action Plan end of 2019. And this is what we want to roll out in 2020. Um, as Kenyans, what you can do is help us. You can go on our website and get download the Kenya Plastics Action Plan and read it. But you can also help us in little ways by segregating in your own homes, seeing if you can collect, start with something small, plastic bottles, collect your plastic bottles uh, separately from any other waste so that these plastic bottles are able to be recycled and we can make something valuable out of it. You can also assist by depositing or disposing waste in the places that are designated for waste disposal. So instead of throwing things out of your matatu or out of your car, you actually look for a bin and you deposit your waste there responsibly. So we have a, a, a slogan, we say trash right, recycle right. If you're able to trash right, we will be able to recycle right as Kenya Association of Manufacturers. Oh, that's yeah. very awesome, your yeah. trash right. Yeah. Uh, okay, thank you so much for coming and uh, sharing coming. all these ideas. I'm sure someone back home have learned something. Thank yeah. you so much. And uh, we are wishing you the very best, even in the partnership you're looking forward to with the Rugby Association. Thank yeah. you so much for coming and have a very good day. Back that's home, right. many thank you. Uh, thanks for keeping us company. She has been my guest, Sally Kayu, uh, head of H H PR and communication with the Kenya Association of Manufacturers. Stay tuned. The Barimo will be here in the next segment. My name is Dereva Hillary. See you later. <laughs>